a very good afternoon to all on the behalf of academy of romedan i dr ganesh welcomes you all the dignitaries <laughs> and today's speaker and specially welcome to uh, professor anand paul sir who is the coordinator for the october months lecture series uh, secondly uh, we have today very young and dynamic speaker uh, professor sachin deva sir so for his introduction brief introduction i would like to invite uh, coordinator for this month uh, respected professor professor anand paul sir Uh, very good afternoon to all. Namaskar, sabhi ko. Uh, all the faculties of Rognidan from various part of uh, India. Uh, today we have a guest speaker, invited speaker, uh, Dr. Sachin Deva sir, among us, and uh, we are really happy to have him as a uh, invited speaker today. Uh, Dr. Sachin Deva is currently working as a professor and head of the department in the PG and PhD department of Rog Nidan at uh, Parul Institute of Ayurveda at Vadodara. Uh, he is uh, graduated from the Hassan College, SKM College of uh, Ayurveda, Hassan, and postgraduate of uh, SKM College of uh, Ayurveda, Udupi. Uh, at present he is also pursuing phd studies from the parul institute of ayurveda dr sachin deva has also published various papers and also uh, he is a co, co investigator in some research project and also working on the uh, different projects uh, along with uh, some publication he also is a recipient of some awards also so today he is going to uh, put uh, his views on the topic nidanaidanika vivechana uh, vivechan on sheet pitta so i welcome him again on behalf of the academy of rog nidan and we hope that uh, his views will be very useful to the not only the faculty also the pg and phd scholars who are joining our uh, academy day by day our number is increasing So I request uh, Dr. Sachin Deva to go ahead with his presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sachin, uh, sir, you can start your lecture. Yes, sir. Thank uh, you. Good afternoon to all. Uh, firstly, I want to thank uh, Academy of Rogani Dana for giving me this wonderful opportunity or a platform to present uh, my view on a topic which I have selected, that is Nidana Vivechana and Shita Pitta. <clears throat> before going into the topic as such i just want to thank uh, the president of this academy dr pavan kumar godatwar sir the secretary dr atul vasne sir coordinator uh, professor anand paul sir and uh, for this particular web, uh, webinar series that is 66th lecture what i am going to present over today and convener dr ganesh sir uh, i i want to thank everyone who are uh, directly and indirectly involved in this particular series Uh, for giving me this platform to present my views <clears throat> so uh, further i will be going with the topic as such so the topic what i have selected today for the presentation is nidana vivechana in shita pitta <clears throat> we know this and we have seen this case uh, maybe as a routine in our general practice or it may be in our own family members or even we ourselves might have gone through this particular disease so it's a, a disease related to the twak and a kandu predominant disorder so once the person who experienced the kandu of shita pitta he or she will be the right one to explain what is pruritis so such kind of or such a dominant a kandu or a pruritis as a characteristic feature is seen in this particular vyadhi i'll move on with the slides so to go on with the topic seti kartavyata ko roga utpadaka hetu nidana so we know that uh, it is a kartavya or it is a responsibility of a dosha to produce or a vitiated dosha to produce any kind of vyadhi so the responsibility of the dosha is to do the dhatu vitiation further leading to the formation of a disease any of it may be any srotas may be involved talking about shita pitta as such it is defined as shita maruta samsparsha pradushto kafa maruta pittena sah sambhuyo 
bahirantar visarpatha so while looking into this particular two lines it is very clear that shita's pitta as a vyadi is tridoshatmaka but it is vata pradan shita maruta sansparshat pradushto kapha maruta pittena sa sambhuyo all the three doshas are involved and the lakshanas what we see in this particular disease are even external features as well as internal features the features related to the internal we will be discussing it later bahir antar visarpatha external feature will be easily visible by your naked eye the internal feature it's a subjective one the particular person who experience or the patient of this particular disease will clear cut explain the symptoms what is happening with him or her what are these features we will be discussing coming on to the next quotation varati dashta samsthana shodha sanjayate bahihi sakandu toda bahula chardi jwara vidahavan udardam iti tam vidya shita pitta mata pare vatadikam shita pittam udardastu kafadikam so what does this tell there are certain varieties see we when we are uh, diagnosing this particular shita pitta yeah the character when when we see it is very simple there will be a hives there will be a kind of uh, reddish the uh, wheels which are present in the body it's very simple it is itching dominant right but when it comes to the part of differential diagnosis there is a vital three diseases which we know very well that is shita pitta udarda and kota clinically it is very very important for us to differentially diagnose these three reason is why it is difficult is the symptom or the presentation looks almost similar i'm not telling exactly same but almost similar in many of them now varati dashta samsthana shotah sanjayate bhai the, the this is about the character of the particular lesion they are talking about varati dashta samsthana the vast uh, by kind of lesion will be seen there is a elevation in the skin shotah sanjayate bhai sakandu toda bahulam sakandu characteristic feature i talk i told already that is itching dominant to the bowlam again there will be pain so now pain with itching lesion that is different itching dominant with very mild pain or sometimes no pain at all it is different itching with burning sensation daha in the body it may be uh, localized burning it may be generalized burning along with pruritis the vyadi may be quite different so this is these are the three important characters what we want to remember in the initial phase chardi jwara vidahava udardam iti tam vidya chita pitta mata pare vatadikam chita pittam udardastu kapadikam so at last line they clarify that vatadikam chita pittam so toda and kandu usually it moves towards chita pitta toda uh, i mean kandu without toda it moves slightly towards udar so this is how we will differentiate these two we are this i am telling you this uh, theoretical part looks very simple but when it comes to a patient as such to diagnose it this is quite challenging moving further asamyak vamano dena pitta shleshvana nigrahi mandalani sa kandoni ragavanti bahuni cha utkota sa anubandhascha kota itya vidyate the one more character one more uh, feature one more uh, disease is utkot or kota as such what does it mean or where is the reference here what is the simple reference they are telling asamyak vamano dena when we are talking about the ayoga of the vamana they are characteristically the feature what we see there is kota as such skin lesion as such so if we observe it may be any kind for example it may be vamana or it may be virechana once the samsarjana krama is not followed properly this is one reason or if at all the ayoga of any kind of this shodhana is done the in the immediate or the first symptom what will occur which we usually see is lesions related to the twak it may be itching or it may be wheel whatever we are talking about shita pitta or especially they are telling it is kota this is very initially seen immediately seen as such so <clears throat> so there itself the reference is that ayoga of vamana it will causes kota and what is the characteristic feature in kota utkota sa anubandhascha kota itya vidyate repeatedly the lesions will be there once there is an elevation of the skin with itching then after some time then again there can be seen then it may be normal then again it can be seen so this kind of uh, punarbhavi lakshanas can be very commonly seen 
once if it is quoted. Next, sa utsangaistha kandu madhihi mandalaihi shaishiraha tapajo vyadir udardha idhi kirtita. And again, to substantiate that it is kapha dominant, some of the characters have been uh, very clearly told and the lesions are mandala in nature. Now, <clears throat> we usually compare it with urticaria. It is not only Shita Pitta we are comparing it with urticaria. It can be Udarda Kota also, but generally the term urticaria is very commonly used. Urticaria refers to both lesion as well as a disease. Urticaria can be seen as a Lakshana in some other disease or urticaria can be itself a primary disease. It can be Swatantra or it can be Paratantra. Any, any of the things are possible. <coughs> I'm extremely sorry. Between repeatedly, I may cough. I'm not that well. Uh, so it may be disturbing for you people. Kindly excuse me for that. Uh, further moving in Latin, the articular lesion or high is an arrhythmatous, usually pruritic plaque that appears or disappears over a relatively short period of time. We observe this. Once, for example, when at home, if the person tells that I'm, or sees the lesion in the forearm or whether anywhere in the body, and if you go to a physician to show that it may not be there at that particular period of time, because it is it the, uh, the nature of will itself is such that it will go, keep on changing. Articular is one of the common dermatological condition with abnormal vascular response. We, we know this very well. Uh, skin diseases are N number. Daily, we may, get, we may see new, new cases of disorders related to the skin. It is innumerable. And among them, the commonest one, what we see is urticaria. So that's the reason why I have selected this particular topic. And definition as such, urticaria is a vascular reaction pattern characterized by transient arrhythmatous, adematous papular plaques, especially the weight <coughs> of varying sizes and shapes, which are usually pruritic. Again, they are very clearly telling it is pruritic. It is itching dominant. Along with that, it is transient. Transient in the sense, it's like transient ischemic attacks. What is transient? Transient is especially it is it it recovers or it comes back to the normal within 24 hours of time. Normal skin. So this is called or this is a definition of urticaria. And what happens in Shita Pita or the Kota, the same characters will be seen. <clears throat> now, what is the characteristic of the wheel? Wheel consists of three typical eight, uh, features. It is characterized by a centralized swelling of variable size, almost invariably surrounded by a reflex erythema. It is associated with itching or sometimes burning sensation. It has a fatting nature with the skin returning to its normal. That's why the term transient is very clearly used within one to two hours. That's what I have. Uh, told initially, if we are having a lesion now and if we are going to a physician to show this lesion, it may not be there at that particular period of time. In that particular place, it may be somewhere else in the body. Sometimes we will recover even more quickly. It may not take one to two hours also. This also can be seen. <clears throat> Further, these are some of the uh, lesions of the skin which you people already know it very well. There are certain lesions called as macules, papules, pustules, with the collection of pus, there are some nodules, <coughs> which are hard nodular swellings. That is not a characteristic feature here. It is wheel, and we have talked what is wheel. Now, these are some of the lesions. Macule. There is no any kind of elevation, but only the discoloration can be seen. A vesicle. This is a nodule, a very hard nodular swelling can be seen. Papule. Elevation from the skin is there, but it is not with pus, pustule, elevation with pus. And this is a typical wheel, where, which is very commonly seen in case of Shita Pitta or variety kind of lesions. And this is a plaque, which is usually seen in case of, it may be Ekakusta, it may be critical, that is a psoriatic lesions. <coughs> Moving further. Uh, in, in 1772, a, a small uh, background for this. Articaria, as the Hubbardian described it, the little elevations upon the skin in the nettle rash often appear involuntarily, especially 
if the skin be rubbed or scrubbed and seldom stay many hours in the same place and sometimes not even minutes it may be there there is nobody exempt from them and by far the greatest number experience no other evil from it besides the intolerable anguish arising from the itching what what why i have mentioned this is one or other day in entire lifetime people usually come across this particular uh, disease it may be in a form of symptom for one particular day or it may be as a disease uh, in in general so they are telling usually there is nothing as such other than itching can be seen but when it, when it becomes a problematic one is once there is an angioedema once the person develops shotha especially in the uh, different areas of the face it can be different part other than the body especially when the smooth muscles get involved ultimately then it becomes life threatening otherwise no except itching reddishness and uh, other features like this which are very simple nothing can be seen more but once there is an angioedema people will go through with lot of difficulties for the epidemiology it is one of the most common disorder and it appears that 20 to 30% of individual have at least one attack of acute urticaria in their lifetime this is what we uh, have discussed <clears throat> basic pathophysiological manifestation i will move with these slides little faster than for ayurvedic part we will uh, go through histamine and chemokine release from mast cells and basophils it's a basic pathogenic mechanism it happens in case of urticaria also causes angioedema these chemical mediators act on the blood vessels causing vasodilation we know it that's why there are so many reddish kind of veins uh, and uh, reddishness in the uh, parts of the body sensory nerve stimulation which causes itching increased vascular permeability and leakage of the fluid into skin leading to dermal edema the activation of mast cell and basophil may be both immunologic and non immunologic immunologic activation involves type 1 hypersensitivity that is immediate uh, and depending upon the causes there whereas no immunologic activation happens due to direct degranulation of the mast cell by certain agents <coughs> so coming on to the types for that there are basically two types acute which <coughs> recurrent episodes of urticaria uh and uh, or angioedema of less than 6 week duration which are considered as acute and beyond that they are considered as chronic and for the diagnosis dermographism which is defined by the appearance of <coughs> <coughs> linear veil at the site of a brisk stroke with a firm object or by any configuration appropriate to the eliciting agent so there are different types of urticaria like cholinergic urticaria cold urticaria solar urticaria vibratory angioedema and urticaria and contact urticaria so these are the different varieties of urticaria based on the different cause which has been identified a little bit of immunity which is a state of a body resistance which protects it against the harmful organism and foreign substances and now Uh, i told you one of the important cause for the formation of a disease is allergy and the word allergy is derived from allos and agan means that other work or unnecessary work there are so many food items pollens etc are found to make an allergic reaction in human body and allergy by itself is not mentioned in ayurveda directly as a term but there are several references available from the text to explain several allergic disorders as well as its pathogenesis we will see it in further slides and uh, causes that is uh, a relevance of satmya and asatmya this plays a vital role in the formation of a vyadhi as such over here the causes of this subjective defect are enlisted below these are some of the causes it may be hereditary the constitution itself infection and intoxication trauma seasonal conditions and psychological so psychological as such it may be stress or anxiety it may be related to the work or any other factors acts as a major cause for certain number of diseases which are usually seen and one among them is urticaria i will give you some few clinical incidences what i have come across which was a kind of shocking for me uh, because i never thought that this can also be a cause for urticaria we will discuss it later 
So this is a mechanical mechanism of allergy. I'm not going in detail about this. We'll move further. So spe uh, specifically sensitize these lymphocytes and the uh, uh, progeny henceforth react to reject subsequent intrusion by the specific allergens. Whenever an allergen get entry into the body, either through the skin or any of the biomucous rotus, it makes Khavaigunya at a site of attachment in susceptible person and makes Tridoshako. So what does it mean here is, it's not that person once come uh, or once face the pollen or dust and that itself is acting immediately as a causative factor for urticaria or any kind of other allergic reactions. No, person may have come or may have got exposed to this Nidana before. Kavaigunya might have already been taken place in him or her. Once more when person comes or gets exposed to this, immediately there may be a formation of a Vyadi. It may be Tridosha Prakopajanya or it may be any Ekadosha Janya, anything it can be. Further, Dosha Dushti, Agni Mandya at the Dhatu level, and the production of ama also at the Datu level will occur in such a way that the person will become a permanent patient of allergy. This long-standing dosha dushti will make condition worst and best according to the nimitta karanas. That's what I told. It's not a one-day cause which will lead to the urticaria. The causes may be occurred. It may be hidden, but the thavai gunya might have already been taken place in him. Now, Sanni Krishna Hetus when getting exposed will lead to the formation of Sita Pitta. This is not only for Sita Pitta I am talking, this may be for any of such kind of allergic reactions which are taking place in an individual. Now this is almost similar to the pathogenesis of Dushi Visha. Previously told Samprapti whatever makes its manifestation mainly confining to the Rasadhatu metabolism. It may be asthma, it may be food allergy, urticaria, etc. From this it can be assessed that Agni Mande is mainly at the level of Rasadhatu at the initial phase, circulating throughout the body and further Dhatu Dushti and a formation of Ama at different levels is also possible. So that's why it may be like Shita Pitta in an initial phase, there may not be any kind of angioedema, but once there is an angioedema, that means that further Dhatu Dushti will also take place. Also, there will be a deeper dhatus involved. These are some of the examples. Portal entry of allergens may be through the nasa, srotas affected may pranavaha, disease may be rhinitis. So, different, different srotases, different diseases as such is possible. The causative organism or the way of entry, or way of the formation of the vyadi, the thavai gunya, what is taking place, getting exposed to sunni krishna nidanas, or it can be sometimes vebichari. It may remain the same, but based on the uh, the, uh, tha, the site of Kavai Gunya, based on the srotas which is involved, different diseases are possible. <coughs> now, promoters of allergy, what are those? The lifestyle, especially the lifestyle, the food habits and the occupational atmosphere. These can be the promoters of allergy. Now, what do we understand by promoters of allergy? Now, promoters may be in the form of triggering causes. Triggering causes, it may be any one particular cause which may fall under Vibhichari Hetus. Vibhichari Hetus, Durbalatva, Vyadikarana, Asamartha. Already the Nidana is there. Hetu, which independently may not be able to cause a disease, but once it triggers the other positive organism, this will lead to a formation of a Vyadikarana. So this is what happens. It may be the lifestyle, food habits, or occupational atmosphere. Now, what is allergy and what are allergens we have discussed? It. These are the allergic reactions what are in taking place. And these are the allergic response, which is categorized into four, which you people already know. Anaphylactic, cytotoxic, immune complex, and delayed responses. And usually, acute phases fall under anaphylactic responses. <coughs> this is a pathology behind it. So I'm not going to go in detail about this because you people are mastered in this anaphylactic cytotoxic that is acute hypersensitivity. It may be delayed type of hypersensitivity, granulomatous formation, what is taking place, which is case of delayed hypersensitivity and the mast cells getting activated 
and immediate allergic reactions which are taking place which happens in arctic area falls under anaphylaxis <clears throat> coming to the allergens what are the common allergens the person uh, may be prey of that is food allergens especially peanuts milk and milk products eggs soya selfish shellfish and certain fresh fruits fruit juices and preservatives now <coughs> i have come across with some of the patients who very particularly have told that paneer which we commonly use in this part or it may be in uh, still northern part of india this is acting as a particular nidana and what is ultimately required in sita pitta is to find out the nidana itself there is there are so many patient finding the nidana and doing nidana parivarjan itself is a treatment what they have come across but in some it may not be possible since there is a tridosha prakopa and uh, doshas are in a dhatvantara gata so shodhana may be required but nidana parivarjana if at all we are able to find out nidana in sita pitta we have won the battle we can we can definitely tell we have won the battle but it is very very difficult now that's what i told paneer was one of the thing what i heard is acting as a causative factor <clears throat> some also have told that after the intake of chicken especially the chicken what they have mentioned it may be some other also but chicken after intake of chicken after couple of days they have fallen ill with the sheetha pitta so this is these two example i i heard then third one is the citric fruit not all fruit especially the citric <clears throat> but what is the important thing is once we go for treatment in case of modern uh, aspect they tell that you go for intake of or chewing of vitamin c that is also acting as a treatment for sheetha pitta now citric fruits many of the people have complained regarding the regarding this as a causative factor we will discuss some point regarding to this why this is now again through the air pollen house dust feathers animal dander see this is this is one one more example i can tell you i have come with come across with one particular patient where uh, she was having an habit of taking her dog in her car in a front seat the dog used to be with her in her bed also so this was her lifestyle i am not telling that keeping this is wrong but we should always also think that what are some of the side effects what can happen if that is the hygiene is not maintained and just uh, exposure to this particular uh, uh, animal dander can also be a causative factor once she came out of this particular habit she was very fine this is one more example what i have come across there may be there are so many coloring agents in the in the uh, different uh, artificial coloring agents especially this also acts as a particular cause one more is applying the dio directly into the body rather than applying it into the dress act as such it is for the body but this also acts as a causative factor for sheetha pitta now certain other important factors are <coughs> this is very interesting <coughs> sheetha maruta sansparsha what they have told i have come across one more patient where the nidana was getting exposure to the fan immediately after bath the reason was to dry the hair to make the hair dry so immediately after bath person comes and uh, sits under the fan and mops the hair now that also act acted as a positive factor now uh, by hearing this i came to know sheetha mark sansparsha why this has been told as a initial cause now this was one example what i have found out now i told you one more important and interesting case was regarding the one particular individual this i told many times in many of other platforms also this particular man uh, had an habit of going to a prayer on every friday so his this was his routine and unfortunately every friday this person used to have attack of sheetha pitta now uh it was very difficult for me to understand exactly the reason because that person was not at all revealing the cause he just used to tell that friday i go for my prayers and on that particular day i have sheetha pitta now there may be so many things either he may not be having any interest to go to that particular place for prayer 
or it may be with the excess of stress he used to go there or with the excess of pressure from maybe from his or i mean his parents used to go there no, don't know what is the cause but this was a cause this this was very interesting to find that on every friday there is there was shita puja one more case what i want to talk about is one female this also i told many times that she was a bank employee and she used to go to a bank which was situated around 50 to 60 kilometers from her home uh, she used to go uh, up and down from her home in a bus and that was a guard section so she used to travel in a guard section to go to that particular place every time whenever she goes or whenever she travels she had an habit of suppressing her vomitus because whenever she we, we know this some people are very much prone to get a sensation of vomiting so she used to suppress it either by uh, smelling the uh, lemon or by intaking of the uh, some citrus with any of the method she used to suppress this now every time almost every day she used to have itching in the skin followed by the lesion now this was very typical what we have seen so whether we have this kind of nidana definitely we have come across so many things and this uh, almost all the nidanas have been explained that's why i told you we will win the battle if we found out the nidan that is what is important over here further we'll move i'll not discuss about this in contact with the jewelry some of the leather this also i call cosmetics applying of the cosmetics <coughs> have also acted as a nidana in development of shita puja i'm really sorry uh now these are the different sides and these are the different uh common allergens what can be seen further these are say now again one more thing is shita pitta can be a seasonal one only on winter there can be shita pitta we have, i have also come across people telling that we have got shita pitta every month it's like every month they are having an attack of shita pitta for uh, certain days it may be 3 days or 7 days rutu sandhis people are prone to have shita pitta on rutu sandhis people are prone to have shita pitta on durdinas which are mentioned for adhyayana that time also people are having lesions of shita pitta so all these we have come across as a general positive factor in development of a disease so these are the generalized like anaphylaxis and airways which causes allergic rhinitis now why these all things the allergens may remain the same whatever the disease what is formed may be different these are ocular and again in skin when it comes to this eczema urticaria atopic dermatitis allergy contact dermatitis these are very very common now allergy can be due to physical factors like visha vayu etc and other factors like asadhya i mentioned viruddha ahara and nitya ahara viruddha ahara are definitely acting as one of the very very commonest cause of shita pitta which we usually will never consider because we will never know that we are having viruddha we will never always keep in mind that after this test i will not have this so if this samskara is done we may have this this every time it is not possible by any individual to do this that's why people will become prone to have this kind of reactions so our science clearly defined that certain diet and its combination which interrupts the metabolism of tissues which inhibits the process of formation of a tissue and which have the opposite property to the tissue which are called as viruddha anna or incompatible diet <coughs> the food which is wrong in combination this is one which has undergone wrong processing <coughs> which is consumed in incorrect dose which is consumed in incorrect time of a day in a wrong season everything can be termed as viruddha ahara that's why there are certain 18 varieties which has been mentioned now the literal meaning of the word viruddha is opposite it sounds that the food combination of certain type which may have opposite properties opposite activity on the tissue it exerts some unwanted effect on the body 
exert undesirable effects when combined in certain proportions and have unwanted effect if consumed at wrong time everything we are classifying it under viruddha ahara with different different viruddhas now these are the different viruddhas which we know very well desha kala agni matra satme etc now viruddha ahara can lead to the inflammation at a molecular level this is not that one day the person has taken but repeated intake of this can definitely act as a major contributory factor for certain varieties of diseases certain food combinations are not in use in today's era what might have been the very detailed explain in our textbook which may not be practiced today but we have to identify new food incompatibilities which are used today in day to day life as per ayurvedic perspective these food incompatibilities can be categorized into karma viruddha krama viruddha virya viruddha and so on and such combinations are will be proven lethal in finding out the nidana sasa that's why a new branch called topography that is a science related to the combination of food this itself they, the people are study, studying now as per the, this particular science the proteins must not get combined with starch and carbohydrates and may be consumed differently this is because starches require an alkali medium and the amylase in saliva contains thiolin and enzymes that breaks down starch into maltose the process continues in the small intestine where more amylase further breaks down the maltose into simple glucose fructose and galactose these are absorbed into blood stream and taken to the liver which dispenses the energy to whatever cells in the body need it if there is no immediate requirement glucose will be converted to glycogen we know and stored in a liver or into fat to be stored in adipose tissue now what is the problem happening consuming protein and starches together will result in absorption of one being delayed by the other so one will get delayed similarly eating sugar and acid fruit hinder the act the action of thiolin and pepsin reducing the secretion of saliva and delaying the digestion we know this in our science <clears throat> in a different way but this is what the current science prove that combination should be very clear now one example i tell you what in my side i have talked about different things what are consumed over here see which we usually do we take all the food and at last we will take chas buttermilk so many of them or many of us are having a habit of taking sweet after food this is very routine very commonly done we take sweets immediately after maybe after lunch or after dinner or many people have i'm not saying everybody does this but many many of them are, are having this so at last we are drinking chas one cup full along with that we are taking immediately one sweet this may also act as anidana why i am telling this is i have seen three four people who are telling this actually as a nidana so once we told i have seen my teacher doing this once he told that particular individual to stop this after 15 days of one month he came by telling that now i don't have lesion after 10 to 15 years of suffering so i thought uh, what i felt is this is nothing but nidana parivarjana which has been done as such no oral medication was given so what may be the cause this also may be a cause so we have to take care while we are uh, consuming any of the food whatever we want so now nidana whatever we have mentioned basically there is a tridosha prakopa leading to agni mande in a dhatu level what we mentioned is formation of ama due to the nimitta karanas roga chances are there it may be not only shita pitta it can be many other so this is one example which is of vicharchika bahya nidana satopic dermatitis which is usually considered as leads to dry skin pruritis it scratch rash itch this is what happens here kasa and chwasa can also be there where they are very clearly told as a raja etc dhuma acting as a causative factor as i told you exposure to this khavai gunya in the srotas leading to srota drushti causing vyadhi maybe at any period of time now dushi visha i told less potent and old visha this the pathology of this also will be like almost similar 
for the various drugs and its reactions this also we have come across arka the tura jaya phala vachana apa balla taka just by touch of this there can be a lesion in the sharira now abo mentioned all the diseases mostly occurs in a person this is important not in all in immuno compromised exposure to allergens very very commonly and does not does not follow proper diet like intake of urudhas etc is very common now this is most of the times will be very difficult to cure in this particular case it triggers when exposed to allergens which suggests that vitiated dosha is still present in the body in the form of lena dosha which i am going to discuss it further and in most of the diseases shodhana line of treatment may become mandatory ultimately now atypical nidanas this we have seen now understanding of vega dharana as a cause for takvika especially shita pitta udarda or kota we very well know what is karma that is vak mana and sharira pravritti is called as karma now vega dharana is a sharira mithya yoga and ultimately what is the cause we know this prajna parada is acting as a cause in 90% of the times prajna parada itself will act as a cause now rogotpatti due to charti vega dharana this is visarpa kota kushta akshi kandu ama jara sakasa shwasa hirlasa venga shwayata vovame and again kandu kota kushta visar if we come across this quotation we see many of the disorders are related to twak especially twak rasa dushti followed by rakta dushti leading to different kinds of twak we have this this has this is very common and initially when we practically also we see i told you before twak twak lakshanas are very generally seen or immediately seen further now this may be a probable sampratti or due to the chardi vega dharana i told one see one patient so this is a cause there agni mandya leading to ajirna and the formation of pharma especially in the rasa vahinis when it gets circulated urdha <coughs> tirak and ado marga gamana of this samarasa will take place from the koshta to the shaka this bahir marga gamana of this leading to the tok vikvaras in the form of uh, uh, shita pitta now these are based on a quantity of dosha and layer of twacha which is involved if tamra and vedni then kushta kilas and visarpa chances are also there it depends on the nidan now suppression of vomiting leading to the disease through the git there is an entry of the irritants in the form of food drug and other microorganism reaches the capillaries and larger blood stream enters the portal circulation and histamines are released from the liver as a response leading to fever toxemia and different kinds of skin disorders this is what they tell shita pitta is one among them now understanding of manasika nidana in shita pitta like udvega or krodha and currently this is most most common pitta and vata dushti in the sharira leading to rakta dushti due to ashraya shri bhava as a rakta sanchalana is throughout the sharira it leads to shita pitta elsewhere in the body causing kandu todha and shodha as a feature <coughs> now some important neglected causes of urticaria some of them i already discussed before intake of sour butter milk after sweet or vice versa this we have seen and this patient also we have come across paneer i told you tomato etc food there were some uh, cases what we have come across tomato it's only one was a only one vegetable or a fruit what we can tell that is a tomato is a cause intake of chocolates any tables having excess of coloring agents this also we have this are all example i have written because this i have seen in a patient there can be many more which you people may be knowing drugs that subside cough and vomiting <clears throat> commonly for example for cough syrups lingtus codines codine preparations for a long period of time there were a case where codine intake was taken and they were told this is a cause after leaving that we found that that is a cause for shita pitta drugs used for deworming like it may be <clears throat> mebendazole albendazole whatever it is so that also can lead to shita pitta exposure to fan immediately after bath i have told you stress in working place so these are the uh, very typical uh, causes for shita pitta so this is a wheel what happens this we have seen and this is dermographism some people also call it as 
dermatographism. It is a common benign skin condition. And people who have this condition develop welts or a localized hive like reaction when they scrape their skin. This is what is problematic. And we can see what may be the condition of this particular individual when there is severe itching. There may be bleeding from the body. And there will be bleeding if this kind of severe intensity will be there. Now, <clears throat> coming if, if it is a Chirakali Navyadi, then definitely there is a Lina Dosha, which I usually talk about. Lina Ta of the Dosha, which is taking place in the Sharira. So many instances in our Samitas, they have given an example of Lina. It may be in, a, in Apasmara, where different Vegas are there, where the Lina Dosha is a, a substantiating a criteria for Dosha to have. It can be Shwasa. It can be many other disorders where there is a relapsing nature, which can be seen palindromic. Wherever it is, there can be Lina Dosha as such. Layaprapta. What is Lina? Lina is nothing but Layaprapta or Lina Twat, Ekadesha Stita Twat and Asamya Darshitaha. That is, it is situated very closely or it may be hidden. That's why it is called as Lina Twat. Now, these are the different avasthas of the dosha other than Lina. Chaya dosha avastha, Prakupita dosha avastha, Baddha dosha, Prachuta dosha, Stambita dosha, Upasthita dosha, Utkrishta dosha, Hrita dosha, Shesha dosha, many, many more. So, these are all the different dosha avastha and I'm, today I am concentrating only on Lina dosha as such, where latent or dormant phase of a disease what we usually call that can be in, in especially in immediate example, what we want to remember now is of Vishamajwara. Trithiyaka, Chaturtaka, what about the middle three? That's what they are telling here. Lina miti anutklishtam. That means it is not bahir gamanon mukha. So dormant phase of a disease. Rogotpatya, rogotpatya anantaram api, rogasa lina avastha bhavati kadachi. Okay. Tada roga nivrtaiva drishyate. Sometimes we feel that one day there is a fever, second day there is no, we feel that it's already almost, we, we have, we have come, across, come out of this. But no, what will happen, many of the times, doshas will be in lena vastha and we feel that it is nivrata. There is nivrata of the disease as such. Now, some example they have given, adishete yatha bhoomi, vijam kalecha rohati, adishete tata datu dosha kalecha kupyati, Savrithim balakalam cha prapya, dosha trithiyakam chaturthakam cha kurute, pratyanika balakshaya. This is in case of Vishamajara as an example. They are giving an importance. Uh, what, what is the importance of understanding this? Now again, lena tvat, ekadesha stita tvat and sukshma tvat anu tvat. Now what, the, what is this? Even though the vega of jara gets shanta, in Vishamajara will be adhered in the body in a sukshma form due to its presence in Dhatvantaravastha. It invariably suggests that Vishamajara is Dhatugata in nature. Now, feeble fire, as an example they are giving, even with an insufficient fuel, supp fuel supply becomes potent by slight cause also. This is, this happens. Now, one day there is an exposure of, into the allergen. Second day there may not be Shita Pitta. Third day or fourth day with this very minimal causes also development of disease is possible. Why and how to plan Shodhana? I told you it is Tridoshatmaka. Bhudosha involvement is there. So usually with the Shamana Ushadis, in many of the patients, we may not get the relief as such. But if we go for Shodhana, why and how to plan? I am not going... Anything in detail, only few things I will be dealing with according to Ashtanguda, what they are telling. Sarvadeha pravisratan saman dosha na nirhare lina dhatushva anutkrishtan palad ama drasani. While explaining sama dosha chikitsa, especially the shodhana. They are told never try to remove the samadusha without proper dipana, pachana, snehana, svedana. That is making the patient to become shodhana yogya because doshas will be vilina in dhatus and will be anutkrishta. What happens if you do shodhana without this? Example is no rasodpati from a tender fruit. That is what they are telling. We are simply 
destroying the person destroying the individuals uh, uh normalcy and making him prone to be a, a, a substance of disease so that is not expected at all now sneha and swedana we know it enables lean avastha of dosha to become into pravana avastha this pravana avastha is one more avastha of the dosha where <clears throat> possibility of dosha to travel vridya tvishyandana paka srotho mukha vishodana shaka mukta mala kushta yanti vayu sunikraha yeah vayu nigraha is a important factor in treatment now what ultimately what does it mean deepanai datubhya pratakvam pachanai pakvam snehai utklishtatvam and swedai koshtagatatvam now this is required ultimately bringing back the dosha from the shaka to the kosta for bahir nishkasana only then our even shodhana will work out that's why sometime uh, sadyo vamana or sadyo virachana may not give that kind of positive result when there is bahu dosha avastha and dosha sar in case of lena avastha this kind of treatment may not act but in some individual definitely if it is a very acute and uh, there is no bahu dosha avastha as such then this may work so to conclude with the topic vega dharana dhatvagni mandyatva mansika karana etc nidanas contribute in the manifestation of a disease trying to find out the nidana in articaria and its critical analysis is a prime task otherwise due to chronicity the dosha in the sharira becomes leena or dhatvantara and even produce complication like angioedema definitely one sit enters the angioedema phase it is very difficult that's why most of them will go with the steroids in this particular phase leena dosha is a pathological state of concealed existence of dosha <coughs> and sama dosha i dare to the dhatu sir consider to be leena because <coughs> they are always anutkrishta in nature priority of chikitsaka should be always to bring back the dosha from the shaka to the kosta for bhair nishkasana and nidana parivarjana is a primary line of treatment followed by shodhana if the dosha is in bahu dosha or leena avastha in the sharira thank you <clears throat> so thank you sir thank you very much uh, i request uh, yes sir yes sir yes sir <coughs> thank you sir i think you have sore throat or something like that it's right <laughs> after that you continue your lecture definitely yeah. yes it was really good uh, lecture delivered by sachin deva sir in spite of his ill health aur beech mein bahut sari takleef ho rahi thi khansi aa rahi thi fir bhi unhone continue rakha aur actually bahut hi detail mein unhone shit pitt jaisa vyadhi generally students also option mein nikal dete aur hum hum bhi padhate hain kaise usko last mein rakhte hai ki agar time bach gaya samay bach gaya to hum usko le lenge aisa karke generally we डिस्कस इट आफ्टरवर्ड्स बाद में लेते हैं सभी बड़े बड़े डिसीजन लेते हैं शीत पित्त में इतना डीप डिस्कशन और डिटेल में पूरा एक्सप्लेनेशन किया बहुत ही अच्छा शुरू में शायद थोड़ी देर के लिए सुभाष साले सर भी जुड़े हुए थे मैंने देखा था उनका नाम अभी नहीं है शायद वो है आराधना मैडम है कांदी मैडम और एक्सपर्ट है नमस्कार मैडम जी 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 आप कुछ कहना चाहेंगे रूप से आज का लेक्चर जो है वो बहुत ही बहुत अच्छा था शीत जिस शीत पित जैसे सब्जेक्ट को इन्होंने सर ने बहुत अच्छे से इलाबरेट करके बताया और खास करके उन्होंने जो लास्ट पॉइंट दीपन पाचन और निदान परिवर्जन जो बताया 
वो बहुत महत्वपूर्ण बातें थी कि दीपक पे वो धातुओं को पृथकत्व प्रदान करता है तो वो एक नई सोच है और इतने हेल्थ इश्यूज के बाद भी मुझे लग रहा है उनको फीवर और कफ कोल्ड है उसके बाद भी उन्होंने कंटिन्यू किया उसके लिए वे धन्यवाद के पात्र हैं और थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू फॉर वेरी मच आई थिंक इफ एनी कैंडिडेट्स हैव एनी क्वेश्चन दे कैन आस्क टू सचिन देवा सर ऑन हिज पर्सनल नंबर वी हैव स्टॉप्ड डिस्कशन ऑन द फोरम ओके थैंक यू एक मुझे एक मुझे थोड़ा ऐड करना था जी सर हमारे कॉलेज जहाँ से मैंने अभी वेर आई एम वर्किंग नाउ गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज वडोदरा वहाँ पे एक महिष्कर सर करके वो बहुत ही सीनियर आपने भी शायद किसी ने नाम सुना होगा वी बी महिष्कर इज रिनाउंड फिजिशियन पी जी इंस्टीट्यूट आई पी जी टी में थे पहले बाद में बड़ौदा में प्रिंसिपल रहे ऑलमोस्ट फिफ्टी फिफ्टीन टू सेवेंटीन ईयर्स तो उन्होंने एक मधुजीवन जो आता है ना नानल सर का उसमें एक आर्टिकल लिखा था उसमें उन्होंने इस तरह के केसेस पे डिस्कस किया था कि श्वास के जो पेशेंट रहते हैं और ये स्किन डिसीज जैसे विचर का शीत पित्त वगैरह उसमें ये देखा जाता है कि कभी कभी एक ही पेशेंट में दोनों कंप्लेंट्स दिखती है और जब उनको श्वास का वेग ज्यादा रहता है तब ये शीत पित्त या विचर चिका का वेग कम हो जाता है इतनी तकलीफ नहीं देते और जब श्वास का वेग कम रहता है तब ये बढ़ जाता है ऐसा सो so, ऐसे उन्होंने बहुत सारे केसेस थे और वो भी उसमें डिस्कस किया था मधु जीवन में एक आर्टिकल था तो उसमें क्या कारण हो सकता है मॉडर्न के हिसाब से देखे तो एक कॉमन फैक्टर उसमें है आईजीई एंटीबॉडीज विच इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर बोथ दिस इम्यून रिस्पॉन्स तो एक मुझे ये ऐसे याद आया इसलिए बताया और वन मोर थिंग इज ये वमन का जो है ना वो स्पेशली वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट छर्दी वेग धारण या इवन द वमन वेग अयोग वमन जो करवा दे उसमें भी अगर अयोग हो गया तो उसमें इस तरह के ज्यादा हाँ दिखता है बहुत ही अच्छा कफ पिता जैसे चिकित्सा सर का इसमें चिकित्सा का नहीं था क्या नहीं मैम निदान पंच निदान विवेचन ही था निदान रीजन बी एंड दिस इज दर्फेक्टेंट ऑफ द respiratory and surfactant of the skin is similar so this is what uh, uh, is one of the reason to have both the skin as and respiratory disorder go hand in hand in many of the cases but then but then sir what you said this surfactant mucosa in the respiratory yes, and as well yes. skin are uh, goes hand in hand so that is one of the reason uh, maybe which is responsible for the formation of both the disorders either respiratory or it may be skin in the form of shita pitta or only the pruritis in the body plenty of patient who came with shita pitta usually will have pranavasrotas vyadhi this is even we have observed the same thing yes sir okay thank you thank you sir Yes, sir. Thank you. Or uh, even though the participants were not much, but in yet to forever, your YouTube will remain, and that will be definitely useful to the students of Ayurveda, UG, PG, both both scholars. For yes, because uh, as a research topic, we have many lectures in PG. So, it will be very useful for your lecture. Doctor Ganesh, sir. After that, Doctor Anand Paul, sir, has asked after October. हाँ मैम अच्छा उसके बाद नवंबर में है मेरा हाँ मैम आप नवंबर में कंटिन्यू करेंगे नवंबर में ठीक है मैं आनंद सर पाल सर को अभी से आमंत्रित कर देती हूँ अपने लेक्चर के लिए <laughs> मेरा तो एक हो गया जिनका नहीं हुआ है उनका अगर वो तो रिपीट भी कर रहे हैं ऐसा कोई नहीं है हाँ वो हाँ, तो ठीक है लेकिन अगर 
ठीक है अगर अच्छे ठीक है दिखते सर और भी सभी है बहुत सारे लोग निदान जी 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 हो बताइएगा तो अच्छा सर है यस बताइएगा तो वक्ता रहेंगे तो ठीक है सर नमस्कार थैंक यू वेरी मच नमस्कार सभी को वंस अगेन वी आर थैंकफुल टू डॉक्टर सचिन देवा सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू गणेश थैंक यू देवा सर एंड ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट्स थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू सर